Hello, Sam from Tool Hut. Today, we have a 2013 Malibu. I suspect it needs a battery. Uh, matter of fact, I've already bought the battery. But let's go through some process of how I test a battery in a vehicle without using a traditional battery tester. Stand by. Unless otherwise stated, the equipment shown in our videos is available at toolhutusa.com. If it's not on the website, send us an inquiry and we'll let you know what the deal is. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about battery testing procedures. First one is traditional battery testers. I know a lot of us, myself and many other, were brought up using this test. We hook a carbon pile tester to the car, to the battery, and you bring up the load to half of the cold cranking amps for 15 seconds and the rule of thumb was shouldn't below drop below 9.6 volts and then they came out with these impedance testers uh, that are simple easy to use most of them got printers on them and, and a lot of it I think that's what a lot of it came down to uh, was the printer the way to track it so the impedance testing I'm not a scientist in any any stretch of the imagination so um, I googled this term and it's just an internal test ohm test and it indicates the condition of the batteries without harming or stressing the little batteries so I came up with a procedure I, I'm not the one that developed it I'm not even the one that perfected it so if you got something to add or dispute hey I'm welcome to discussion on it I like to test a battery in what I call where it lives I, I like the I like to test a battery in the climate that it's being used in so I'm going to use a scope for the first part of the test and then we'll use a meter uh, and do it again after the battery's replaced stand by okay so I got me a new camera I'm going to try a couple things today. Um, so we're going to do a battery test. It's my wife's car. 2013 Malibu. So what do we need for a battery test, you might ask? Now let's start with a laptop. Pico, right? I'm gonna need a Pico scope to do a battery test, right? So we'll put that down there. We'll get our Pico out. It goes with our laptop. And then the next thing we need. Now the furnace is running in the garage, so the next thing we're gonna need is a table to put our junk on. I mean our Pico in our computer, right? So let's get this started. I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, so first of all, let's do the Pico Diagnostics battery test. I'm not a big fan of automated tests anyway, and you'll maybe you'll see why, maybe you won't. So it says please start the engine. It does have an amp clamp hooked up on channel B and just voltage on channel A. A couple of things I'd like about this test. It gives a lot of good information, but we'll, we'll show we'll go over it here in a few minutes. So it finishes the capture, and then it's got some good information down here at the bottom. It's 12 and a half volts, 100% straight of charge. It goes to 7.38 volts during cranking. Uh, I live in Michigan. There is no way that battery is going to make it through the through the winter. No way. So that battery is getting replaced, even though the test says the battery is good. Now I'm going to rerun the test again. I like don't like doing things just based on one one test. So I'm going to let it run here for a few minutes get the battery charged back up 
and then we're going to run the test again just to see if the results are comparable. So I'll leave it run here for a few minutes. And then we'll go through a couple things here. I don't like the fact that the temperature can't be changed to Fahrenheit. Maybe it's a old version of the diagnostic software. Maybe they fixed it in a later version, but right now it doesn't work. So I had it down to one degree Celsius. It, it's pretty cold out. Uh, I'm not going to say it's below freezing, but anyway, I put it back to the 20 degrees that it defaults to. So we're going to just run the test uh, with the temperature at 20 degrees. So it wants to start the engine again. I do have my amp clamp on upside down, by the way. Uh, I think it's kind of neat that the Pico knows it doesn't care. So voltage goes down. And then it kind of squeezes everything together here. So it's not a running pattern like the, like the Pico is. So, like, once again, we're down to 7.13 volts this time. So, to me, the battery's junk. But anyway, beside the point, it says recharge. So now it's telling me the battery needs to be recharged. Maybe it's because I've tested it once before. So let's move on to a new t another test. I'm going to leave it running again for a few minutes. Okay, so... This is the way I prefer to do a battery test here. So what we've got is I've got just the Pico Automotive software. You can do this with any scope software. I have a Pico, so I like to use my Pico. So what I've done is I've got the headlights just on for two minutes. I got 20 seconds per division on the scale up there. And I start, turned the headlights on before I started the scope. So I'm probably not going to go the whole two minutes. And I have sped up this capture. So you're not going to sit here and watch the screen for two minutes. So I do have the amp clamp on it. You can see the amp clamp's not quite zero. Uh, it's going to be an older amp clamp. It's pretty accurate, but it's really hard to zero. So we just deal with it. So what... What's going to happen here is I'm going to let the leave the headlights on for a couple minutes, and then I'm going to start it, and then we'll go over the pattern. So you can see I started it. So let, let's get the the pattern out and go over it. Okay. So what we've got is we're using our Pico Six Automotive software. This is the capture we just took. So I've got my amp clamp on it. This is where I started it here. We could see the amp clamp went over the 200 amp scale. So I'm just going to turn off the amp clamp. Not really relevant for what we're doing. It was just for information. So, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our magnifying glass and we're just going to zoom in on this thing. So we can see that it looks like the the voltage, just based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like the engine went over just over one complete revolution, or two complete revolutions, one complete firing cycle for all four cylinders before it started. Which, okay, good information. We know that the engine's starting pretty quickly, so we're not really drawing too much on the engine. So bring our scale down here we got 6.3 volts at the lowest point now it's running there's seven and a half seven point nine so my rule of thumb and it is my rule of thumb it doesn't have to be yours it, you can make yours anything you want it to be my rule of thumb is while it's cranking if it falls below nine volts it's getting a battery we can check our connections, stuff like that, before we can dim the battery. But this, to me, is good information. This tells me that I'm testing it right at the battery. I've hooked 
actually right to the clamps. I'm not hooked up to the posts. I'm hooked up to the where it connects to the posts, the clamps or the cables or whatever you want to call them. So, like I say, my rule of thumb is if it drops below 9 volts, it's getting a new one. And I don't care if you're using a scope or a, a meter, whatever you wanted to use. All right, so we're going to put the battery in it, and then we're going to rerun this test with just a voltmeter. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use my phone. Because you use your phone for everything today anymore, right? Let me see if I can do this. Let's go to zero two minutes. I already got the headlights on, so we're just going to run this for two minutes. You can see our battery voltage is down to 11.63. I'm going to go back to my camera here. We should bang when we're at two minutes, so we're eleven point six volts now. So we're gonna do this on a separate way. Alright, sorry, but that's about the best I can do with what I got. So the timer has went off, so we're gonna go ahead and crank the engine here. Okay, I used a couple of different cameras there. Uh, didn't really work out the way I expected to with the new camera. So I ended up using my phone to record the last part of it there. But we looked like we saw about 9.3 volts during cranking after the headlights had been on for two minutes. Now that was a new battery off the shelf and I had started it for a couple of minutes just to bring the charge up on the battery. So. I guess what I'm telling you is I'm not a big fan of the automated tests, but if you use a little bit of your brain and think about it, you can use the data that you get from the automated tests without using the good, bad, or whatever reference. Just think about the situation that you're in. Are you in a hot climate, a cold climate, a warm climate? Is it the time of year that, that really depends on a battery? If it's not, you know, when it says good, just deal with it. Take it. But if you go up to the parts store and they tell you your battery's good, look at the rest of the data. Put a voltmeter on it. Put it under a little bit of a load that created by the car or vehicle. And then test your voltage. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more videos. Uh, we don't do a lot of videos of this sort. Uh, we may do a few more. Uh, just let me know what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs down, questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, all that stuff down at the bottom. Keep it clean or it gets deleted. Have a great day.